Coming home is coming. I'm talking about Here's my growler. growler. Is it a real? I don't think I told them the story. You did yesterday. We were talking all no, about No, I told it on Instagram, but I didn't tell them the story of my mum. Of your growler? Of my mum saying the hairy growler. Tell them about the hairy growler. Did I tell you yesterday the story about my mum and the hairy growler? Ellen, wow, the burning, burning honey story. It's a classic. Uh, it's already a classic. It was really sore this morning. I think she vlogged it, some of it, didn't you? Did some you of it's it? cracking mm. off. It'll, oh. it'll appear later. We're vlogging today as well. Um, how is everyone? Hi everyone, I'm Mum of Girls, Linda Breslin, Sharon Elston. Give us a wave if you come straight over from Hello Alice Instagram. B, hello Helen Ellis, hello Joyce Pritchard, hello Bev Barry, hello Abigail. She says hi Honey Bunny, that's hi, quite user. funny. Hi Honey Bunny, hi, honey bunny. or Honey Monster. You're um, honey so monster. everybody welcome all the new people that are joining us today because um, I know lots of you have just come over from Instagram. We're here every day, all week. We do live. Mary Swift, I always miss the lives. You haven't missed this one. 7 a.m. here in the US. Whereabouts wow. in the US are you, Mary? It's good to have you with us, Ali C. Say hello to Ali C. She just come over from your, your Instagram. Hi, Ali C. Hit the subscribe button, darling, so you don't miss anything. Chloe Holly. Chloe Holly, Tracy Pulsa, Kaz Dudsworth. My, I can't even got my glasses. Bev Berry. How many fingers am I holding up? Okay, so Nadia is going to watch the football later, and I just got a sense that you're going to be really annoying because I haven't watched football with you. You weren't really engaged in the one that we watched in Norfolk. Right, I was just telling you, you guys that were just with me on Instagram, you know this. Story. I was just saying something accidental has happened. I was initially forced into watching football, and now I'm enjoying. It's a beautiful game. It's a game of two halves. <laughs> it's a it's a beautiful game. game. It was a beautiful game when Kane got that I wanna, penalty. I want to dig down. Can I just say, the penalty was the ugliest part of the game. No, it wasn't yes, it ugly. Was. Mark, it Mark, was. it was beautiful. It was Because that fucking Danish goalkeeper was so good. I mean, he was very good, that Danish goal goalkeeper. He I have was. to say, which was the best goal in the match to see if you've got a comprehension of it? Oh, it would be the first Dane. It was. It was a beautiful goal. That no. was a beautiful no, goal. No, it was Neither not. of our goals were see, beautiful. But you see, for me, true beauty is is gnarled and knuckled, knuckled and a bit scarred. Is that why you're with up. me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's nice. A beautiful disaster. A beautiful I don't disaster. like a perfect goal. I don't want a perfect goal. I don't want whistling through and just going, yeah, but, I want it to be down. I want it to be dirty. Yeah, I want well, it, to it would be, be nice scrub. if... I want everyone in the yeah, net but the Danish fighting. scored their own goal. And then it was a penalty. You cannot in any way say those goals were gorgeous. Our I found them beautiful. They I weren't beautiful. Mark, listen, sometimes when a new eye comes to something, it can teach Babe. the old eye something. And Babe. I've got a new eye on football. Babe. You, I, my mum and I, we were so funny though, because we watched it together on Wednesday in the caravan and we were like proper like football. Yeah, well done, Emma. Like, and she was naming everyone and everything. And then we both went, isn't it annoying? That bit when it goes somewhere where obviously it's not allowed to go. What do you mean? What do you mean? Where, where does it like, go that it's not allowed run, to they'll go? They'll all be running along. So demonstrate running they'll with your hands. They'll all be running along, having a great time. Running. And you're going, oh, 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 and a ball is going somewhere. And then they will just stop. Because it goes off the pitch. That's what I mean. That's what we don't like. It's called the edge of a pitch. No, no, not when it goes off the edge. The skill is when keeping it in When it goes in the wrong play. end. When it goes to the wrong end. What do you mean it goes to the wrong end? I think it's the offside rule, but we're never bringing that up. Never. I we're not talking about it. Don't mention it. When a player kicks a ball forward and there's a real attack on goal. Yeah. Yeah. And when they kick it at the moment that the player kicks it... Yeah. If there's another one of their players between the back defenders and the goalkeeper, i.e. there's no one between them and the goalkeeper, right. and they at the point of kicking the ball, if they're there, you'll often see on the replay they put a line, don't they, through yeah. the defenders. If the player is just past that line, so behind the defence, but the why goal. do they kick that's it there? Well, why no, do they kick the point, it that's there? That's the skill. Boy. It's stupid. The skill of the they game. They kick it where they're not allowed to kick it anymore. The skill of the game is the defenders are trying to always trap the strikers in offside. So you'll see a ball come up and the and the defenders will move what back. What about those guys that go like this? With the flag. And they're going like this. Like this close to the line. With the and flag. They're, li they're, they're linesmen. I would say Let to them, you. listen. Just stand there. Just stand there. I'm going to show you something. Ah! Fucking idiot! You've broken my leg. Top 
Right, Have we not had enough injuries this week? It was a sliding tackle. <laughs> That's her kennel cough, by the way. Oh, God, we've got to take her to the vet today. Yep. So, that was oh. a sliding tackle. The men with the flags are linesmen. Yeah, but why do they have to stand so close, waving their flag in our boys' faces to put them off? They're not putting them off. Well, anyway. <sighs> ZF, can I get a birthday shout out for my two sisters, Sam and Hawa? I speak Happy so often about- Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Sam and, and Hawa. Hawa. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. So anyway. So what are you most excited about today with the football? Food? I'm, I'm actually, no, I'm most excited about the football. I'm very excited Which about Which player football. do you like the most? You see, I wish Kane didn't speak, because when he speaks, he puts me off. But, but when he's kicking But when he ball, heads the ball, he's great. Yeah. Um, I think my favourite is Sterling, because yeah, how did he manage, after 90 minutes, I know, now in a football game, 90 minutes, to still run like he'd just been catapulted out of a catapult. What I like about Raheem Sterling is he, go, like he goes smiles. so fast and then he drops down to a walk, a nonchalant walk. And then he goes up And then he picks the up. Yeah, and he's, he, for me, he rem at his best, he's like Maradona. Um, he's very good looking okay, as well. He's so got a lovely he's smile. Got such a nice face. Such a nice what, face. So what are the rules? You know that it's a game of two halves. Mm. You know that there's how many minutes in each half? 45, 90 minutes. Mm. What happens extra then when time. it goes to extra? How long is it extra Well, time? this is the thing that annoys me a lot about football. Is, but I'm starting to get my head around it that they all do it for extra time. So they fall over and then they cry like absolute babies and you just stand there going, really? This isn't extra time. No, but this is how they make extra time. No, it's not. Because it goes no. back off, they If injury. they're drawing, if there's a draw at the end of 90 minutes, how does extra time work there? Oh, I don't know. I thought they got extra time because they'd been mucking about pretending they'd hurt themselves. What, the whole half hour? Well, I thought it was all the minutes had to no. stop. <laughs> Did you? That's very sweet. There you go. That's very sweet, actually. Uh, no, so if it's a draw at, at full time, 90 minutes, it instigates a new half hour of play. Right. What did I just say? I don't know. I got bored. Sorry. Oh, my God! <laughs> you saw the blank vacancy in her eyes like a star. Do you know star. what I was thinking about? The food. No. Taking a shit? No! <laughs> What? I was thinking about how much I like this new product. <laughs> Fucking how quickly can you bail out of a conversation? Sorry, what were you saying? How no, quickly? No, hang on a minute. You were in the conversation yeah, and you, you hadn't even finished saying what you were saying and you'd moved on to something else. Yeah, because you were talking about rules. I hate rules. But you said it's a game of two halves. Extra time is also a game of two halves. Yeah, but I don't care about that. If there's extra time, it's extra time. But it's not, the, know where it's it's not the time from. that they all fall over and cry. <laughs> this is what you said. Oh, so why it. do they fall over and cry then if they don't get extra minutes? Because they're trying to get free kicks. But does the referee ever fall for that? I mean, All the, the time. dramatics of it. What do you mean fall for it? It wasn't a penalty. It's injury time. I'm sure there's such a thing as injury time. There is. They add on about three, four, five minutes at the end of full time. Ah. Yeah, but that's not the half hour that they add on at the so end of a draw. So what was the half hour, because I wasn't listening. They added half hour on the end because it was they were drawing. Ah. And then if they're still drawing at the end of the extra half hour. Then you hour, have penalties and then England are rubbish at penalties and we will be lost and it won't come sorry, home. What is the hair product that you're using? <laughs> <laughs> I've completely lost interest in this conversation. What is it? I don't actually know, but it's oh, just right. very nice. Because I think I used it and it's made my anus hairs go really curly. Mark, don't say <laughs> anus hairs. <laughs> For God's sake, people have come in for the news. <laughs> didn't quite mean to say that. I genuinely didn't mean to say that. What is wrong with you? <laughs> There's something wrong with you. You keep saying things. What do you mean? <laughs> Rubbing nothing on the table. You do that a lot when you just want to. You, you rub nothing. Don't rub you away. No, that's not nice. <laughs> Mark, don't because of my neck. What is that? Don't. <laughs> right. Oh. What are we here for? What are we supposed to be talking about? <sighs> right, Chi Chi. How is Chi Chi? So I had a conversation with the vet last night. Mm. She's a lot better in herself. She's wagging her tail. 
She, uh, we did ask the question, can she come home on Monday? And rather frustratingly, he said they have to consider whether she still has to have some kind of surgery to make her lesions um, not less dangerous, but less sore. It's quite frustrating because we don't really understand. I mean, my thing is, I, I, I think I should talk to them today because I had so many more questions. Yeah. Or maybe do them on open talk back because what operation can you get, give for lesions unless it's skin grafts? Yeah, I think that it's to do with them trimming the dead flesh and oh. the damaged flesh. Oh, my God. You know what? I can't bear what I can't bear. It's no, we, like... we've, di we've gone through everything, E, regarding the garden. We've talked through everything with the vets. They're, they're presenting in completely different ways. Yeah, we've gone through it. Yeah. Honest to God, there we've gone through anything every conceivable that they thing. She's seen every specialist. We've even got, yeah, we've done rat poison. We've done mm -hmm. um, snake bites. Absolutely everything. They're pretty settled now on um, vasculitis, but a rare form of vasculitis. And that will have come from just an infection of any kind. Yeah. Could be stomach, could be a scratch. It could be, you know, it sounds a bit like, you know how you can get like a scratch and get sepsis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it's something like that. So immune system went into overdrive yeah. with this infection that yeah. came from somewhere that they say we will never know what Well, they it also is. said it could be nothing, something as simple as her system has attacked herself. I mean, this, apparently this people can happen. Do, people do just get autoimmune Yeah, yeah. vasculitis diseases. can happen in middle-aged female dogs quite a lot, yeah. apparently. So, yeah. But anyway, so she's still, she's still away. Don't be alarmed when you hear Toffee coughing, though. She's got a bloody cough out yeah. of nowhere. Yeah. She's fine in herself, but She's though. fine. She's absolutely fine, but she'll just suddenly have this coughing. Yeah. I've looked it all up. We've got taken to the vet later, and it definitely cannot cough. I mean, it describes it to the letter. Bev Berry, do you get a lot of snakes where you live? None at all. Well, exactly. That's what we said. And then None we said, all. oh, my God, what if it's somebody's pet snake that has escaped? And I said, that's not a snake in my pocket. Mark. What is wrong with you today? People are here for the news. I know. Are we? So that's where oh, she's at. there's a lot of kennel cough about, is there? Is there? Has any, have any of your dogs ever Could had it be kennel COVID? cough? You know what I was giving her earlier? Honey. Honey with warm. Honey. I couldn't believe it. I was looking up online and apparently you can give dogs honey. Yeah, we but did. You have, to, you have to mix it with water. Nicola S asks an important question. How's your neck today, Nadia? Um, my neck was very sore actually this morning. You weren't aware, because she's, she fired honey at her neck, because boiling honey. it's just sort of cracking up the skin on it. So it's not great, but I don't have, want to moan. People have much worse than Have that. you used honey on it? I'm going to get some Manuka honey, but also our friend from Chiswick has just given me a very good idea. And bio oil and vitamin E oil. I've had lots of really good recommendations. Um, yeah, so thank you for asking. Thank you. Thank you very about much. about olive oil? I always no. remember, no? I remember when I was in Greece when I was younger, I, I trod on one of those sea urchins, you know, the black when they're black, those black things, and all the spikes went into my oh, heel. Oh, poor thing. And then you I, had to I, use I, hot wax? For no, that. then I was taken, I was literally taken by some fisherman off to meet this old woman who boiled oil. Yeah. Poured it on my. Well, it on not my, boiled it because she would have well, been. Well, she did something with it, and then she literally hand picked them all out. Yeah, but, but also wax, I think, isn't it? It draws them out. There's also a really good homeopathic remedy called leadum for when something gets stuck in and it draws it out. It's quite incredible. Um, somebody's just saying, spider bite, somebody just said that. I, that's what I was thinking in the week. I was mm. thinking of spider bite. That's the one thing they haven't mentioned though. Yeah, mm. but they have, they've also checked her entire body, oh. her skin and everything. A friend of hers, uh, Jen, Jen Legs, his friend, runs a dog walking service. Oh. It's stopped because of an outbreak of kennel cough. Bloody hell. Of course, they're going to be coughing all over the all over the park, aren't they? Emma Carter, yeah. I did Rachel's yoga class yesterday. Did you? Oh, oh Emma, Emma, that's lovely. I'm going to be doing it next week, and my sister will be. I just signed up for the... But I did the, 10, the 9.30 one today, Zoom. It's a really nice yoga class. A bit more difficult. It's not quite yeah. beginners, but if anyone wants to join them. Calendula up. cream. Julianus. Calendula cream Calendula is very good, cream. Yeah. Uh, Sophie R. Mark, did you like watch Badil Skinner at the Big Breakfast? I used to love the Big Breakfast. And I used to love fantasy football with Badil and Skinner. Yeah, mm. absolutely. I used to watch them a lot. Oh, Sky Elise is Labrador. Oh, Sky, good luck with your recital. You're playing your piano, aren't you, tonight, I think. Oh, wow. So good luck with that. Oh, good luck, Sky. And Sky, what happened? What did they do with your Labrador's kennel cough? Salsa Trish is just going to go and get a Magnum ice cream, just like that. Go on then, Salsa Trish. And Alice Kearney would like us to sing Happy Birthday to her hum hum husband, Seamus. Seamus. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday dear Seamus. Happy birthday to you. Guys, just to tell you a bit of a treat, obviously, we couldn't film the No Name Sunday show this week because life has been bonkers here, I can't tell you. But Mark has put up one of our Eating in the Sums in Positano, and it is so beautiful, that programme. It's exquisite. That beautiful. hotel and that restaurant was some of the best food I've ever eaten in my life, mm. and I had to cook in there. It's a really scary episode. Oh, Mark showed me a bit of it this morning when I don't want to be taken back to how difficult that And for was. all you members, there may be more landing. Did you like that? Yeah. You don't know what I said. No, no, no. She hands doesn't hands listen to me anymore. Huh? Oh, did. feeling sorry for herself. Rachel Lewis had surgery on Thursday. Feeling sorry for herself. Send Rachel a big hug, everybody. Big hug. Rachel, big hug. There you go. So, okay, so let's move on to some of this news. Guidance on masks. Should we or shouldn't we? Will we or won't we? Is it mandatory? Is it not? It looks like it's a cluster. So we're hearing tomorrow, aren't we? Well, I think the recommendation, Nadim Sawani, Zawani, the... Uh, Sawani. Uh, what's his name? What is, what is he? He's he the vaccines is the vaccines minister. minister. We're saying today that the, the wording is going to change. Rather than people making their own choices, it's going to be recommended. That right. people wear masks in certain interior scenarios. Uh, they said scenarios. they were going to stop the freedom rhetoric. Yeah. So that's them stopping So the Gabrielle says, I think the government's guidance has lost its meaning. You're absolutely right. They haven't even updated their website to show new Delta strain symptoms. I'm going to be wearing a mask. I know, Gabrielle. Say. I noticed that. I was looking at that the other day. There is nowhere where right. the new symptoms are written, which is ridiculous. They, they are being reported, though, by, but, by certain but publications. But young people, ha it has to be pumped out all the time because yeah. it's young people that are getting it now, you know. Mm. And it is a cold. Yeah, Tokyo, like Tokyo cold. are in an emergency fourth wave. We are essentially in a third wave. We, we are in the third. We, we are 100%. Listen, we've got high, highest infection rates ever, but... Mm. We've got the lowest admissions at the hospital. We were spoiling for a wrestling match last night because you were getting annoyed with me and I was getting annoyed with you and we but weren't we were, really we were understanding kind of each agreeing, other. We were kind of, well, I think maybe our marriage is breaking down. <laughs> if we can't have those sort of civilised <laughs> oh, conversations anymore. Shielding folk are never mentioned. It's so hard for yourself. You, you're absolutely right. Well, and to be honest with you, I saw something written about that today saying Freedom Day for anyone who's shielding is a, an absolute Armageddon day. Mm. Um, and I, you know, and I, I'm, I'm sure you probably hate the idea that for many people who are shielding, I think it's important to say that men, most people who are shielding don't want everyone to live on their terms. But it's about tone and it's about attitude and respect isn't it in language and I, I do think sometimes there's just a fervent it's sort of you know unthinking desire just to I kind think, of go mad for it yeah. i think i think boris's communication again is woefully woefully um remiss really he 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 just he just gets it wrong every single time. He wants the adoration. At the moment, he's riding on the coattails of this England match. And I think... Well, once the England thing... I, I've said all along, this England the, thing is a great distraction. I've the loved the England thing. I think, of course, it's been amazing to see the crowds oh, in yeah, there and see everything. But I just can't bear that disparity because, again, there are still people not being able to get, have enough people at a funeral. People aren't having their weddings. You can still only one of you can be with... One parent can be with a sick child in hospital. We've got a friend at the moment in hospital who can't have her daughter there, can't have her husband there. And I just... I can't bear that. For me, it would have made more sense to not yet go for major super spreading events, like huge amounts of people from across the country all coming together to then all go back to reseed the Delta variant or whatever across the country and being more relaxed with people's really serious emotional needs, the need to see their parents in care homes regularly, you know, um, poor people with their weddings. I mean, I know it's easy to go and we, you know, we're past it. And it's really easy to not think that much about weddings, but it's a huge thing, a person's wedding. Mm, and they've no, had to course. postpone and postpone. And I've said it before on here and I'll just keep saying it. If one more person says to me, oh yeah, but to go to a football match, you have to have a test, a COVID test. Why isn't that the same for somebody having a wedding or a funeral then? Because you can track and trace all those people. You know who they are. You can't track and trace all those people in the bloody... Um, Football grounds, and I'm not blaming the fans at all, but I'm saying he makes decisions to try and be popular, and I don't feel that they're 
often the right thing. He's one of those people, and we've all known them and we've all met them, he's one of those people who says and, and retrofits everything he's saying to suit the audience he's talking to. He wants to please yeah, whoever is in front of him. And that, Trump's that's like, actually... Trump's uh, like that. Well, not so much, but I mean, he's an absolute recipe for disaster when it comes to leading a country through a really nuanced and complicated and often contradictory situation. Because then he's flipping and flopping and flipping and flopping. You know, he, he says what he thinks is going to gain him the most adoration and laughs from the people before him. I mean, he can be very funny, and that's his drive. As I've always said, he's a brilliant host of Have I Got News For You. I just wish he wasn't our Prime Minister. Um, and I just think that the whole mask thing is going to evolve. I think, to me, it makes total sense that the recommendation should be, or even the stipulation, I think, for London Underground, should be to wear masks, because it's not about our, I keep saying this as well. It's not about our human rights. It doesn't have to be about our human rights. I don't mind that human right I, flying I, out I, the window I, if it makes other people feel comfortable. Listen, there is always going to be a really awkward and uncomfortable moment when we shift from everything being decided for us to us going back yeah, but to We're not talking decisions. about that. We're talking about masks. And it is going to be really... No, no. And this is one of them. We are going to have to move to where we are living alongside it and people make those decisions. I mean... I will not go into, you know, if, I, if I'm if i in a room and it's a closed room and there's elderly people in there, there's no way I'm, not, I'm going to leave those people feeling I disagree entirely. I think it should be mandatory on all public transport. Mm. I think it should be mandatory until we are much further, not forever, not forever, but just because we've all decided mm. 18 months is enough doesn't mean that it's the right time to, 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 to un, undo that. When do you think the right time will be because this is never going to end? When we've got one more month or six weeks further down the line and even more people mm. are vaccinated and we get much more of a sense of whether the news coming out of Israel is as worrying as it potentially sounds, which is efficacy of vaccines doesn't last as long as we all want them to. So, you know, I think there are a lot of variables here that we could keep protecting ourselves with the most minimal of sacrifice. That's my, that's my mm. point on it. It's a minimal sacrifice in very limited rare occasions but to wear a mask. I agree, but what I think the problem with why their messaging is so fucked and why you can't get people to do this, nobody's sticking to the rules anyway when you're out and about. I mean, I sat on a train, two trains back and forth. We were the only people with bloody masks on. You know, because of the, dis the disparity, because you keep seeing huge events and Wimbledon and all the toffs and everybody doing what they want with no mask, it doesn't, it's not working anymore because people just don't believe in it anymore. Because yeah. people didn't believe in it in the first place and now they're like, well, it, it, does, it doesn't seem necessary for all of these people. And that's the problem. I'm, talking about, I'm talking about that's microscopic number of hands. situations. I was in the cinema last night, I posted an image and someone said, you don't have to wear it. Maybe you don't have to wear it, but I don't mind wearing it because actually there were three or four other people in the cinema and I thought, well, that would be nice for them if they saw me. If I see someone wearing one, I kind of think sub subconsciously, oh, it's not going to be so fluid in here. It's not going to be, yeah. you know, the air isn't going to be so bad. I forgot about the mask after the first three minutes and then if I wanted a minstrel, I could have just pulled it down and had one. I just, I think we're over amplifying this lack of human right. If you, if you need no, to I'm be, not talking if, about it if you need to be given level. some kind of exception due to your health conditions, You've got them anyway. You, you can get them anyway. You don't have to wear them. So I just don't understand it. It's not about me. It's not about me. It's about other people. Of and course. I, and it drives me nuts, the amount of people that are so focused on me rather than us and rather than the old person who might be shielding or knows someone who is shielding who walks into an environment and is made to feel mm. comfortable by me wearing a mask for them. And right the way through the pandemic, there's been those people that just have refused. Right? Yeah, and, and it's no all, thought of anyone else. And you said it all along. This, mm. this, this whole COVID thing has made people's inherent, latent sort of Whoever personality you are, it's traits. Magnified it. It's magnified it. So if you're a deeply selfish person who's only really interested in, oh, I want this. I mean, for example, I can't actually believe that, what was the story I was reading last night where there are people, um, people are assaulting and insulting and remonstrating horribly with people giving the vaccine because they want it rushed so they can get off on holiday. Did you hear about that I yesterday? mean, come can on. Can you believe it? Come on. So disgusting. But anyway, the thing is, we will certainly be talking about this for a lot longer. We've been talking about it for a year and a half, and there's going to be a lot more conversation. Sorry, we're about happen. to get really annoyed about one other thing as well. How was Wayne Cousins, the guy who's murdered Sarah Everard, how, how, has how this can the I'm Metropolitan so Police this. have allowed this to happen? So here are the, some of the facts. 
well, some of the things that we have now discovered about him. Um, he was nicknamed the rapist by fellow police officers because the female police officers that worked with him felt so uncomfortable with him. I but mean, not uncomfortable enough to report him or, or, or... Well, because I'm sure, I am sure, like in many work environments, you keep your mouth shut, otherwise everyone's going to say, oh, well, she's a bit... Women are having to do that every day. And, all you... are, and I bet within the army and within the police and within that, it's even more so, oh, just... Well, you don't be silly. Yeah, he's a bit of a creep. It doesn't mean no harm. They should, they'll be putting up with all that shit. But wasn't he driving naked? Apparently he used to drive his car... From the waist down? Yeah. I mean, this is... I was just thinking of Haku family hearing this stuff. It's just so, hopefully... And also, when he was a teenager, he shot another boy with an air gun, and apparently, as the boy screamed in agony, he stood and laughed. So, how is all this stuff known about him? I mean, there was somebody, a criminologist, talking this morning, saying there were so many red flags about this guy, there is going to be no excuse as to why he kept his position, and that it has to go right up to the very, very top. I mean, Cressida Dick, who we hear all the time, is a brilliant woman, is a brilliant woman, is a brilliant woman. Everybody says this about Cressida Dick. But actually, I thought her speech was absolutely awful the other day when she said every single officer has been insulted by his behaviour. It's like, stop now, stop. Because we know that's not true. You know, look at that report that came out a few months ago, you know, inherent... Um, corruption across the force of course there are b many brilliant brave officers in the police force but they've got to just clean this out we've got to know what's going on we can't just keep having these platitudes given to us by Cressida Dick. He was this caught just... he was caught flashing six years ago and four days before he snatched yeah. Everard. I know. I mean the trauma so that will cause by for his the family. Police? I know that there was, I think he was reported, there was a report, he was reported for the, for the four days before, because it was in a, it was in a fast food restaurant, wasn't it, somewhere? So 12 officers are under investigation now for mm. covering up for him. Mm. I literally, I can't comprehend it, so I hope, I hope the investigation goes that to the very top. I mean, girl. how it, you know, sometimes you, you, you listen to these stories or you see them unfold like this and you think, well, none of this is going to help the family, really, because it just reminds you of what could have been and what shouldn't have happened. It's just absolutely awful. I mean, I, I, can I just say on this point of flashing, there was something uh, on LBC this week, Sheila, Sheila Fogarty was talking about it, and she wanted to just do a phone-in where people just talked about every single woman who phoned in expressed the fact that they'd seen men flashing or masturbating in public. God, yeah. I mean, no, I know, but I mean, it's like I've... As a man, you, you just don't see this and stuff. And you know what the thing is, when people get... I was, I was, I was reading something of one of, an influencer the other day. Who was it? And she was talking about how really, weirdly Facebook keep pushing her films out to men. And she's really a, a, a female, very much a female influencer. And um, she said, it's so frustrating that Facebook are doing this. I'm getting so much abuse. I'm getting um, photo dick pics sent to me all the time. And I was like, look, well, let's just pause there for a second. A dick pic is somebody flashing yes, at you. Yes, it is, yeah. It's just become normal. It's, it's not okay it's just in become any normal. way. And young girls tend to say, oh, well, you know, I screenshot it, so I've got him back. Well, no, you don't realise that you're actually, that's not actually abusive behaviour that you've just had to go through. Somebody sending you unsolicited pictures of their penis. Mm. And it happens on the it happens on transport. I mean, I, 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 I literally can't get it my head totally, around these men. It was totally. That's right. It was totally. I literally can't get my head around these men. I mean, if I saw it happening, I would not be able to stop myself from actually just grabbing them and hurling them off the tube because it happens in the rush hour. It happens. I mean, what the hell? And it's I just, usually I men just... my age with really young. Not that there's any distinction made. It's it's awful whoever it happens to, but. What an embarrassment. What an absolute embarrassment to our gender. Oh. Faith says, is that how they found out it was him so quickly? Because I wondered how they knew. Yeah, they maybe so they fast. connected connected the dots. But um Susie you know, Susie let's... Bomber, I used to get dick pics all the time on dating apps. It's horrible. Disgusting. You should report every single person that ever sends you a dick pic. Report them. It's as bad as being flashed at on the bus. 
You know, and, and let's just remember Sarah Everard. You know, I've read quite a lot about it. It seems she was just the loveliest of women, you know, with a huge friendship group, very close family, very engaged in the world, you know, a loving boyfriend, um, a decent, kind young woman with everything to look forward to. And I just, I just can't imagine what this is like for her parents, hearing this just insult after injury after insult after injury to hear this despicable and and it makes it so much if it could if you believe it could get any worse it mm. makes this story even worse mm. that there is the ha ha bit of a rapist ha 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 that's the culture that we live in we've talked a lot about this since Sarah, Sarah Everard hasn't it I mean I I I'm under curfew every single movement I make once I step out of the door I'm thinking I'm I'm I'm, I'm on alert and I've been like that my whole life and I bet 99% of other women are the same mm. it's just we just why why is this just accepted yeah I feel sorry for those police women that probably had to put up with all kinds of lecherous behavior from him Ruth Blandford naked attraction that dear what the show naked attraction I think that just trying to remind you of sort of sanctioned flash flashing. Oh, I see. I know. Disgusting. Well, <laughs> Absolutely. Outrageous. Sophie says that's the thing women are ridiculed for standing up for ourselves and reporting things and it starts at yeah. school. We get told boys will be, be boys. boys. I mean, come off it. Come off it. Oh, have a laugh. Oh, come on. Don't be cheer so sensitive. Up. Don't be so sensitive. Yeah, yeah. What's the matter with you? You know, all of that stuff is just the layers of the beginning of being able to overstep every boundary. I've just got really cross now. Ugh. I was in a good mood first. Now okay, really let's cross. go on to Hancock, who apparently is preparing for his return to the cabinet. Yeah, now, why is this? Is he serious? Apparently. I'll tell you what I think. Can I tell you what, what I think? I think Hancock has got so much on Boris and everything. He's picked up the blower and he said, unless you give me something good, I'm going to blow your cover, mate. Well, I mean, I, I wonder... Think, I think. I wonder got if... got leverage. I wonder if he knows a whole st load of stuff like um, Dominic Cummings does, because I bet they wish now they'd kept Dominic Cummings in pissing out rather than pissing in. I.e. Uh, keep your enemies the, close to you. Yeah, the fact I that... I think we're going to burn. We sorry, I was thinking... That's right. The fact that um, Boris called him a fucking useless idiot, and we know that because we've seen the text... And then tried to keep him, didn't sack him for such a breach of conduct. He must have stuff on him. Well, of course he will. I mean, he's the health secretary. As much as they feel they've got stuff on him, he'll have stuff on them. And I think they, they're all briefing against each other all the time, aren't they? I mean, all the time. So I think this is, I think Matt Hancock will stage a comeback. I think he'll be minister for, I don't know, nappies or something. Minister, you know what I mean? He'll be sort of, I don't know, he'll be given some sort he of... He can't come back. I'm sorry. He's going to come back. He's going to be like the living dead. It's like the walking dead. He's going to keep coming How in can unless you take... ever come back? How no. can you ever trust anything he says? Oh, Faith like... Goodman, Hancock to education. It, it, oh, Christ God. almighty. Well, there's a, that's a bloody mess there anyway. Culture secretary. He'll be given something Rich that's not says valued. maybe he could work in the canteen. He'll be don't given... put him on culture. No, but they'll give him... Yeah, but they don't value culture. So oh they'll be God. he'll be given some post like that where he can... Just sort of sit there and... You know what? <clears throat> I bet the shine... Turquoise turtle gardener. Now he doesn't have the position and the power that he did have, I wonder how much his mistress has gone off him. Ooh. Because now if they're just in a two up, two down... Ooh. You know, and he hasn't got... He's not flicking his fingers for oh. everything to happen. The power has gone. Because oh, she never so... looked at him twice at university. Yeah. It's the power that is very intoxicating. Subject Clark. That's a bit saucy, but I'm going to release it because YouTube has kind of said no. That's a very good point. Who says that? Aaron, can he not sense the mood of the nation? We don't want him back anytime soon. Well, you have just hit the nail on the head. I don't think at any point this government have sussed the mood of the nation oh. because they don't really understand ordinary people. But can I just say, we do confuse things for them because we keep voting them in. Stop voting them in, guys. If they think they're popular in the polls, they're don't gonna vote think, them they're in. Gonna, of course, they're going to think they're all right. Hi, Russ. Out. Hope you're well. Um, yeah, you know, it's frustrating. Anyway, look, England. 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 It's a Guys, hit the thumbs up just under Mark there. Um, <laughs> if you've enjoyed spending the last, I don't know, half an hour or so with us. Yeah. And if I you have. Want, let's see if we can get it up to 300. Oh, God, that's challenging. And also, guys, 
hit the subscribe button if this is your first time over in the channel and have a bit of a look round the channel because we've got all sorts of things going on here. And in the members area, don't forget to check out Eating in the Sun. It's a real oh, treat yeah. of an episode. And there's another one landing soon. And it will just transport you to Italy and beautiful food and me making a bit of a tip myself. And Mark does the voiceover. This was a show that used to be on BBC. But um, I'm not usually one to be kind of, you know, find escapism in a sort of show. But as I started watching it, I was like, oh, God, that's nice. Oh, Tim Reed says there's a new member. Oh, Marie. Marie. Welcome, oh, Marie. over 300. Right, so any new member gets a song, Marie. Welcome, Marie. So, Marie, I just met a girl named Marie, and suddenly I know she is a member. So, Marie, 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 welcome to Marie. You've moved into... Da, 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 da. Isn't that Annie? Oh, Alice Kinney, we love this morning's chat too. And happy, happy birthday to your husband, Seamus. Happy birthday to everyone. Mark has seen The Black Widow and so has Maddie and they're going to review it. Later today. It's coming, no. It's coming, virtual, big hug. Big virtual hug. Oh, lots of love, we love, love you. 